Hello, this is Blake with Flyboy Accessories. Today we're going to walk through the SuperTrax installation step by step. Now, of course, the first thing you're going to need to do is order the SuperTrax. You can find this and other great products for RVs, home builds, and pilots on our web store at www.flyboyaccessories.com. Once you have the SuperTrax, inside the box you will find two precision machined aluminum S tracks, a spine track extension, two aluminum strips that you will use as support bars for the aft end of the S-Tracks, and a hardware kit that includes a spacer block, parts to assemble new canopy rollers, a bunch of hardware, and two rubber hose bumpers. The first thing we're going to do is open the canopy and use masking tape and a marker to mark the exact centerline position of the canopy rollers on both sides when the canopy is fully open. It's normal for these to be a little crooked. Leave these marks in place for reference later. Remove the bolts that hold the canopy trucks on, grab a buddy, and remove the canopy from the aircraft. Set it to the side somewhere out of the way. Go ahead and remove the rear baggage wall as well, as you'll need to get access to the underside of the spine track. Don't remove any of these track screws just yet. If you have an A model RV, please make sure that you install a jack or other tail support before you start. Remove the original Vans canopy rollers and axle components. You won't be needing these, but you will reuse the trucks. Follow the diagram included with your instructions to assemble the new dual rollers on your canopy trucks. You'll have these on and off several times through the assembly, so don't tighten them completely just yet. Mark a line an inch and a quarter from the aft end of the canopy track and cut a notch out of the top here. This notch will allow the rollers to escape the canopy track to clear the locking block. The way this roller setup works is that the S-Tracks will pick up the second roller you've just added and the rollers transition from the canopy tracks to the S-Tracks as the canopy slides back. Now depending on how things are set up on your airplane, you may want to cut a tab in the canopy track and bend it slightly outward as shown here to help guide the roller through the transition. And of course it's a good idea to dress these edges with a file before you proceed. When this is done, you can slide the assembled rollers back into the canopy tracks and up out of the way. Take a moment to examine your existing spine track and plan where to place fasteners. The extension piece is designed to overlap with the existing track for strength and function, but the extent of the overlap in the method of installation is ultimately up to you. In this install, we're using the extension piece as is with the full two inches of overlap. This will get us two screws in the front of the track extension, one of which was match drilled to the original track screw, and for the rest of the track we found a sensible spacing for the remaining screws. Put down a few guards to keep you from scratching the plane, and cut off the appropriate amount from the top piece of the track. Do not cut the bottom piece of the track. You will likely have to drill out the aftmost rivet in the spine track to get this piece to come off. Dress the cutoff edges, make sure there are no rivets in the way, and align the track extension with the original track. Mark the edges for a proper alignment and pre-drill the holes in the track. There will be one hole that you'll want to match drill to the original track screw, so wait to drill that until later. Deburr the holes you've just made. Put the track in place, double check your alignment, and drill the holes through the skin. Add a Clico to each hole as you go to keep things aligned. When you get to the hole that needs to be match drilled, you can use a strap duplicator like the one shown here to match the hole, or simply drill up from the bottom. Once all the holes are drilled, countersink them appropriately so that all screws are flush with the top of the track. Use the number 6 screws included in the hardware kit to attach the track and have a helper inside the plane to install the appropriate hardware. The next thing you're going to do is install the S-Tracks, but before we get there, let's take a little detour to talk about the spacer block. We've included a machined spacer block in the kit to make things a little easier for you. This spacer is designed to be a starting point to help you get the tracks aligned and properly spaced, but you'll need to test and tweak to get things to fit perfectly for your install. But here's how it works. You'll probably need to take out the aftmost canopy track screw so that it doesn't interfere with the spacer block. Place the side with the extra angle into the S-Track and slide it into the straight section of the track. You can turn the screws counterclockwise to take up some of the vertical space between the spacer and the track, but don't turn these so far that they clamp the track or move the track away from the block. 
place the other side of the spacer block into the existing canopy track, and do the same with these screws. Now, you're going to start with the side corresponding to the roller that was furthest aft in the marks that we made early on. Using the spacer block, align the S track so that the vertical portion of the tracks aligns with the slot you cut earlier. Also, please be aware that the track has to be far enough forward for the roller to clear the block at the aft end of the canopy track. For most installations, this means that the front edge of the S track is going to be about three inches in front of the front edge of the block. When you get this in place, use the spacer block to get an idea of where the final spacing for the track will be. You'll likely have to add a few shims under the trigger guard area and under the front of the track. Clamp the S-Track in place using the clamp placements shown, turn the screws on the spacer block clockwise to loosen them up, and carefully slide the spacer block out of the way. Test the rollers to see how they do in transitioning into the S-Track and rolling up the vertical portion of the track. Make adjustments as needed to get a smooth transition and clear the block. Take a quick look at the aft end of the S-Track. If it's touching the skin, you may choose to relieve some of the material here, or you may choose to simply turn the aft end of the track inboard a little bit. Both methods are fine in moderation. On some RVs, the diagonal stiffener in this area may interfere with the super tracks as well. You may need to trim some material off at the aft end as shown here. Now it's time to plan where to put the screws in the S tracks. Refer to the instructions for some notes on screw placement. When you're drilling these holes, you'll need to countersink any screw holes that are inside the track. To do this, drill the screw hole through the bottom in the proper placement. Continue this hole through the top of the track. Enlarge the top hole to a size that will accommodate a countersinking tool and countersink for one of the number 8 countersink screws included in the kit. When you drill the hole for the trigger guard area, we recommend that you use a long bit to drill all the way through the track. This will help you in drilling down for the proper placement. Put the S-Track in place using the spacer block. Check the fit again, clamp and drill the holes you will need. Place the screws in hardware and check the fit and function one more time. Repeat all of this on the other side. If the marks you made for the canopy rollers earlier weren't in line with one another, which is common, you'll need to adjust the second track forward to accommodate for this discrepancy. When you get this side placed appropriately and clamped, it's a good idea to put the canopy back on and carefully test everything together. You want to make sure that the rollers enter the S-Track smoothly and that both sides of the canopy ascend and descend the vertical portion of the S-Tracks as close to simultaneously as possible. Once you're satisfied, you can disconnect the canopy from the trucks and remove it, or simply slide it back and set it on a thick pillow or other cushion on the turtle deck. We've included an aft support bar as well. We recommend this placement and a few screws for this bar. You may find you need to do a little bending to get the support bars to fit appropriately. When you're drilling these holes, be extremely careful not to drill through the skin of the airplane. We backed the holes with a block of wood to keep an errant drill bit from damaging anything. Now the top screw here can be a little tricky. If it's giving you trouble, you can always take the S-Track off to install the top screw first. We chose instead to awkwardly poke the nut into place with a screwdriver and hope for the best. Either way works in the end. At this point, you should be finished with the spacer block so you can replace the canopy track screw that you removed earlier. We've included a short length of rubber fuel line hose. Trim this piece to length as needed and place it inside the track at the aft end. It should butt against the screw for the support bar and provide a nice bumper at the aft end of the track. At this point, double check everything for tightness and proper operation. The last step, which you must do, is to take apart the rollers one last time and apply Loctite to the screws before reassembling. Make sure to keep the Loctite away from the plexiglass canopy as it can cause crazing. Thanks so much for watching. Our website again is www.flyboyaccessories.com where you can find this product and many more, as well as resources on how to get in touch with us.